Hitler also revised history, and in Hitler's case, erased part of his own past. On March 11, 1938, enthusiastic crowds greeted the Fuhrer as he annexed Austria and made it part of the Third Reich. But Hitler had another very personal agenda. Once Austria belonged to Hitler, he took steps to eradicate any suspicion of his Jewish past. One thing Hitler, uh, from the very beginning, sought to do was to cover up the evidence of his past. And so, by doing so, he caused a lot of rumors and uh, myths to be projected upon uh, the, the blank space of the past that he had she tried to erase. Hitler eradicated the Austrian village of Dollersheim and a dark secret that haunted him for years. The birth registry of Dollersheim held the birth certificate of his father, who Hitler suspected was the illegitimate son of a Jew. My name was put forward because I wanted to protect my friends and family from the association. People say to me, well, you should, have, you should come out with everything. If you're going to talk about any of this stuff, then you've got to be prepared to deal with all of this and that that you set up for yourself. I had an email that said that to me, uh, criticizing me for not releasing my last name. And I thought to myself, you know what? What they're actually saying, anyone who actually says that, is actually saying that Martin Luther King deserved to die or that Gandhi deserved to die for making themselves known. I've gotten many death threats from the religious community. We live in a very fucked up sick culture. We really do. The society is mentally ill. To be normal is to be messed up in this culture. So my name, Peter Joseph, you know, at what point does my identity become absolutely transparent? Should I give people my social security number? Should I give them my tax returns? And just to throw it in there, there are plenty of people throughout history that have gone by their first and middle name, excluding their last name from their general communication and walks uh, in their society, just like people often use their, la their middle name and their last name. Those that have something against me for the things that I talk about want to find anything they can to try and to, uh, make me look like I'm hiding something or I have ulterior motives, and, and I expect that. But, you know, whatever. It doesn't mean anything to me. I go by Peter Joseph. People can call me whatever the hell they want to call me. I'm constantly interacting, putting myself out there. I have nothing to hide. And uh, even if someone finds out my real identity, where I live, who my parents are, who everyone uh, in my friends are, it's not going to change a damn thing. The unfortunate reality is that I am given a controversial title, and people do have a lot of problems with me of a more traditional-minded upbringing. And uh, I don't like to see other people suffer um, because of what I do. But uh, most of my friends and family are very much aware, and they accept this. So uh, this is something that I just deal with.
So can you, can you briefly describe um, what Zeitgeist is about and um, its essential message? The first film or the second film, or the whole uh, project? The first one, the second one, and the whole thing. The first film was a treatment on myth, things that were basically uh, elements of society that people think are real, but as you take an objective look back, you, you see that there's a lot of mythology that occurs. And it's not just mythology in a traditional sense, such as religion, which is the first section of the first film, but the mythology of 9-11, which if you take a strong objective look back, and as difficult as it is, you begin to see that the uh, conspiracy theory that could possibly exist is actually the government's story and not some fringe cult ideology, which is what the government claims.